11 minutes past eight and what a week it's been for Heather Mills since she last appeared on this sofa just over a week ago now. The repercussions of that interview are still being felt around the world and in Heather's house, no doubt. And just as you predicted, Heather, the British tabloids went mad. They haven't stopped. You've been on the front page every other day, actually. Every day. What am I talking about? There actually, you are. it's nowhere near as much as it was in the height of it. And um, <laughs> and and it proves exactly what I said because you, you had it live, what I said. I didn't compare myself to the McCann's. No, and didn't. then they wrote that I did. Yeah. And um, so all they're doing is giving us more ammunition to use in the case. And so much support. It's been amazing. Well, we've had a lot of support it. in here this morning. All the emails have turned around. And in fact, the day after you did that interview, there were some negative um, emails on the day you did the interview. And then the following morning, it completely turned around. And 70% of the reaction we got was supporting Because they you. saw that they wrote lies again the next And that's day. what they were getting angry about. Yeah. All right, let's have a look at your past week. It's interesting stuff. Here we go. We've had death threats. I've been close to suicide. It's the most talked about TV interview of the year and it happened right here on the sofa. I've had worse press than a paedophile or a murderer and I've done nothing but charity for 20 years. That was last well, Wednesday and as soon as Heather time. Mills launched yeah, her battle with the tabloids, her PR man quit on the spot. The they will go for me tomorrow and they'll go, she's crazy and she's this and she's that. Go for it because I will do even more. The very next day came that backlash. The paper she'd attacked hit back. Like a red rag to a red top. And Here's we reported mirror. live He's from Heather's hometown of Brighton. <laughs> The big talker tonight is Heather Mills. So Heather up the ante again, television. blitzing the American TV networks, right. this time the lashing out at Sir Paul in. McCartney. I have pleaded, I have begged. He knows that I was at a suicide point and still nothing has been done. And in this week's Hello magazine, she accuses the multimillionaire of being mean with his money. Then on Tuesday this week, another blow from the tabloids, another woman in Macca's life. Beach strolls and kisses for Sir Paul, the papers cast Heather in the role of the angry ex. Here's the front page of yesterday's mirror. What the hell are you up to? yells Heather. Eight days of tit for tat, but has taking on the tabloids taken its toll? Has it? How has no, the past it's week been, been unbelievably cathartic. It's like it's a difference between being in prison or being on parole. <laughs> you know, that's the situation at the moment. 18 months of the worst press ever. And I got the chance, you know, to protect myself and defend myself and my daughter. And it proved yet again that they wrote loads of lies. Um, in that situation, you know, with Paul, there was no phone call, there were no tears and tantrums, there was what, nothing. What about Nancy Chevelle? Yeah, or what, you, what, what, you know, it? basically I just said, I wish you all the best, and that was it when we did swap over. It's none of anybody's business what happens in Paul's love life. Yeah, and according to the papers, he met Nancy after spending a bad-tempered divorce summit day with you. Is that true? No. I mean, it's all, you know... Has he, has he reacted um, to your appearances? On no, not a word. Hasn't said a word. Not a word at all. It's just very civil for our daughter and, um, you know, the main thing is that it's a perfect example of another load of lies. As if I'd have the Sun newspaper on my table for my daughter to see, you know, the one paper that is the worst of all. Well, um, it's just complete rubbish, you know, but the support, Fiona, has been unbelievable. We have thousands and thousands and thousands of people go on to uk.com. I'll hold it up because last, I think it's my Geordie yeah, accent. It's your accent. I was saying uk.com yeah. and people were thinking I was saying uk. And it's uk. uk. C A R E. Yeah. Um, but really um, amazing stories and leads. Um, we've got a gentleman in um, Newcastle that he was contacted a year ago. He's approached by what he calls a slime ball of a Sun reporter, but in his words. And they told um, him that I was in the gallery shopping centre and offered him money to make up a story about me um, on the spot. And he was so offended by it. He said, absolutely no way. But he knows somebody that did, and that story ended up in the newspapers. So it's becoming a criminal situation. So we can't go into detail with his name, but I have all the information. And a statement was took from him last night. All right, but there are people, you see, who will say, if you want the press off your back, then just be quiet. But go away. We talked about that last week, didn't we, Fiona? I, I was quiet for a year. I didn't say a word. But I had 4,000 articles written about me. All I did was go to a supermarket or try and play in the park with my daughter and remain absolutely silent. 
silent. So we talked about that and it didn't work. And all that happened was, it's like being an abused woman at home, you know, and you're not allowed to tell the family because it might upset grandma such and such, but you're constantly being abused and you're not allowed to say anything about it. So I knew the papers would go to town on me. Of course they would. I was saying, you know, just boycott, you know, the son in particularly for the lies and don't be duped anymore. And that the, the, the whole point of this is that I have the platform to speak out on behalf of thousands of people. Well, and you know, a, a mother, of... a mother <coughs> lost her daughter in a car crash. Mm -hmm. Her son was driving. It was a complete accident. The press wrote, um, "Brother kills sister." Uh, it was proven it was an accident, and they had pages of headlines. She got a tiny apology, set up a fund. They ruined the fund, saying she was using it for her personal use. She, uh, the whole community turned against her. She was totally devastated, and she gets this tiny apology. You know, I've got loads and loads of stories that people have sent in. Someone that was accused of killing someone, um, he was completely cleared. The community still blaming him for it. Lies and lies and lies. All right, well, a lot of people phoned in in sympathy with you last Thursday because um, the papers said that you compared yourself to Kate McCann, which, in fact, we know you didn't. And we actually had um, an email from Madeline McCann's grandmother, Susan Healy, um, praising you yeah. for standing up and saying thank you for supporting Kate and Jerry. She says Kate and Jerry are the most dedicated. I can't imagine what they're going through, yeah. and that's really, really kind of her. And I never would compare myself in that situation. Nobody can ever imagine what they're going through. And one day when they can uh, have the freedom to tell their story, then I'm sure that will be very cathartic and healing for them well, as well. What does this all mean for you personally, though, Heather? Is it not going to make your dealings with Paul a bit more difficult if you do keep speaking out? Well, I'm not speaking about Paul anymore. I just responded to questions that were put to me that were complete lies. I am very much protecting Paul with everything that I have, um, you know, and but I had to protect myself. And, and, and when my daughter grows up, she's not going to read a one-sided story and say, Mum, why didn't you try and protect Lots yourself? Of people will be sitting at home saying, how can you say you're protecting him when by coming and talking about him, as you did last week particularly, it seems that you're doing the exact opposite. You're kind of showing no, no, no. him and showing other people no. that the relationship wasn't just one-sided that, that, that we've been led to believe. Yeah, but now it's balanced, you know. No, I'm not asking people to come on my side. I was abused, and you have no idea what that was like for 18 months. Um, the media were fed by a particular party, and I've said I'm not having this anymore. Mm. Now they're that party is backing right off and there is some calm and peace in our lives. Okay. Um, so but has he tried to gag you, as the press is saying? I can't go into um, whether he's tried to gag me. Um, the reason we are not divorced is because I basically am not meant, meant to talk. But again, we're going into the whole Paul thing and the whole thing is about the campaign, about all these people that don't have a voice, they don't have a right to reply. We have thousands and thousands of people that have signed the petition. I just want to thank everybody for the amazing support. I had a little girl come on the train. They said, Heather flies off to America. I never flew to America. I did a few satellite interviews um, to clear things up. And then I took my daughter to Disneyland in Paris. And you had and a standing a ovation on the train, didn't you? the train. You? It was amazing. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe it. There's so many. It's heartwarming to, to feel and see that there are so many like-minded people who want to be told the truth, who don't want dishonest journalism. A little girl came up to me and said, you made me cry last week and I felt really bad I said I didn't want to make you cry and she said um, I hate those bullying newspapers I'm never going to buy a newspaper so it's this presumption that, that the public want to read this try writing some positive good stories or stories that are going to help change the world and get back to proper journalism because there are very few real journalists left all right Heather we have to leave it there because we've got other items to fit in haven't <laughs> we frankly but uh, nice to see thank you again you so much you seem really you calm everybody. actually you fit, I'm seem so really happy chill. because you can't imagine 18 months of abuse and I got, you know, to, to say and create a campaign to change the European law. Thing is, and the support's still, been immense. They and are the more still they lying go about me, you, though. But the more they do that, the more evidence I have to show. Because there are live shows like this where the truth is being said. They write the complete opposite tomorrow. So they're just giving us more ammunition to use against them. All right. Well, listen, Thank have you. a good day, whatever you're doing. Thank you. <laughs> nice to see you again. We always tell the truth on this show, don't we? We do our best. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, have you got anything you'd like to unleash? About that. <laughs> I still haven't heard about this degree you've got, and that, that's worrying oh, me slightly. No. It was the university... Oh, no. Why are you the producer shouting at me again? It's always your fault. He just wants you to think that we're uneducated on this <laughs> programme. Uh, you can see uh, all of that full Heather interview, which dominated the headlines last week, on the website. If you'd like to watch it again, gm.tv. Most popular interview.